tonight on The Profit. Holy shit. There's a lot of cash in here. The owner of a specialty coffee business has thrived against all odds. I think you should be very proud of what you've accomplished. Only to become the victim of his own success. And now this business is kind of growing beyond my experience. As the company has grown, he's lost his grip. We don't have meetings. None. No. Leaving his process unrefined. I don't think you guys have any idea what's in your inventory and his staff in constant conflict. So you know a lot more than you're telling me, and I've called you out on this. Pisses me off. This whole thing pisses me off. If I can't help him regain his confidence and be a leader... When you come in to pitch, the stories, the passion, I didn't get that. This business will come to a bitter end. You should pack your and you should go. Hi, Marcus. Hey, how are you? This place is huge. No. What is your name? Bita. Bita? Hi. Parker. Parker, nice yes, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as well. I've been to a number of coffee shops, but I didn't expect to see a giant window and 10,000 square feet of coffee beans piled to the ceiling. I didn't expect to see a roaster in the middle of the room. It was a Mecca epicenter of coffee. Marcus, Steve Sims. Steve, how you doing? Great to meet you. Nice Thanks to for meet coming. you. Dude, yeah. I love you your beard, bro. <laughs> your beard is awesome. Uh, thank you. If you ever shave it off, you're going to go out of business. Yeah, exactly. What yeah. makes you different from the other big coffee people? Number one, we only source high-end specialty coffee. OK. So we don't mess around with commodity coffee. We don't mess around with gas station coffee. Super premium. We're, we look for the best of the best. Number two, we do source the coffee, so we kind of take the middleman out of it. I'm also oh, in Whole Foods, and I have all my bad coffee in Whole Foods. OK. All Can right. I get a tour? Let's do it. Awesome. So this is our roastery. Okay. You know, this is where we roast it all. We're roasting fresh every day. Oftentimes, I go into businesses, and they have capacity, but they don't have the product. That is not their problem here. They have a great product, and I want to figure out how to deliver more of it. So this is in the warehouse. Holy <laughs> There's a lot of cash in here. Yes, there is. There's a lot of green in here. <laughs> We import for guys that want specialty coffee. Say you own four restaurants and you want good coffee in your restaurants. You come to a guy like me, or I'll do private label. We do that for a lot of guys right now. It's becoming even more clear to me that you're running two distinct businesses here. Wholesale, selling green, roasted bags. Then the other business is opening up these cafes. Yep. Look, there's a lot to understand here, but what I want to understand first is how the overall sales process works and how the team interacts together. Marcus. I'm Jeff. How you doing, my man? Hey. Nice, nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. What do you do here? Been here from the beginning, and I handle the commercial accounts. Wholesaling? Wholesale. And do you have a staff that works for you? Per se. It's not very... What's per se mean? You know, there have been squabbles. There have been personality conflicts. People are, uh, you know, bickering. For any organization to be healthy, communication is at the forefront, especially with as much as Bodhi has going on. And if people are arguing and fighting as much as Jeff says they are, well, that's something I really need to get to the bottom of. They're in the middle of bean factory. Right in the, right in the heart of it. Humility is a requirement for me to be in business with somebody. But there's a certain amount of confidence that I would like you to have to be partners with you. And I'm telling you now that I am going to make you have confidence. And you got to be able to communicate. If you can't, it's like, People don't know what to do. I agree. My offer is a million seven fifty, one million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I would like forty percent for that. I would like that million seven fifty to stay in the bank for working capital, so that you could buy inventory without having to think about it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not getting any tattoos. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> I'm not doing it. We have a deal? Yes. How you guys doing? All right, man. How are you? Hey, Welcome Marcus. to Chicago. In order for Bodhi to have a national presence, it has to have a distribution center in the Midwest. So today we're going to a roaster production facility and warehouse in Chicago that's available. This feels legit. This, this is set up to do volume. Sure, yeah. sure. Goal number one is to get Steve a distribution center in Chicago. One of the byproducts of it 
is that he'll have roasting capacity, which will allow him to also grow his retail business. Now that we know we're gonna have a hub in Chicago, it's time to start knocking on doors and drumming up some business. So the first place that I'm taking the team is to a restaurant group called Rocket Ranch. They own a number of restaurants all across Chicago. We now know we have a foot in the market. We're doing business with the Espresso Shop. And so I thought we could sit down with these guys. Let's, let's do this. You ready let's to sell go? some coffee. All right, Kevin, what, where do you feel your coffee's been lying in, in the past as far as like what, what caliber of coffee you guys serve here? Well, we have six venues, soon to have seven. Uh -huh. And each one uses coffee in a very different way. Okay. Um, what, what is, uh, you know, uh, we're kind of uh, joining forces with Marcus and uh, trying to work into the Chicago market. Well, we, you know, we work with companies because of the quality of the product first. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, uh, it's always fresh. Always, always the highest specialty coffee we can find for sure. Um, when you come into pitch, the stories, the passion, I didn't get that. So, I can't make a decision. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Great, Great feedback, and we'll, we'll learn from it, and we'll get better. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thanks a lot for having me. Embarrassed, but that's that's where I'm at right now. By the way, he's a terrible, terrible salesperson. He's very he's green coffee. His sales are so low, and I've been kind of noticing that over the last few months. So. Well, what do you think? Is he qualified to even do what he's doing now? I think this is something we need to feel out and see where the business goes going forward, and then decide. OK. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea for the three of us to chat after Chicago. I hear from you on what you thought happened there and have open dialogue about it. I think I did okay. We, we went in there and we explained what we do. I think I'm good with people. I think we the bed. I think it was horrible. It was just a pitch all the way around is how I feel. I really do. And I felt like you really struggled to build rapport with people. I don't think so. I mean, my numbers have been good. Dude, look at my numbers. I, I'm, I've I'm... looked at your numbers. I don't like them. Honestly, for selling for five years, you should be doing three to five containers of coffee a month. Easy. That's Are you doing think. three to five containers a month? No, but I don't sell anymore. Now I'm putting, I'm doing a lot of other stuff. I think it's interesting that rather than addressing your own issue, you started to deflect to Steve and challenge him, like, well, are you selling three to five containers a month? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You just said that. Why don't we pick this up later? Because you're you're sort of checked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's break and uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit. If this was my business by myself, I know what I would do with him. If it's not going to change, then it's not going to work. Like in the last couple of weeks, I had came really close to firing him. Really close. Was he disrespectful to you? No. He went to purchase coffee in El Salvador, and you right. know that's his girlfriend. Ever had? She's the salesperson. She's the owner of the farm. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. He was buying from his girlfriend. Yeah, we've been buying from her for the last three years, but now she's your girlfriend, and I just got the worst pricing I've ever had. He has demonstrated a lack of consideration for his coworkers. He has represented himself as somebody he is not. And now, the company's been buying beans from this farm for three years. He starts dating her a year ago, and the price magically goes up around the same time that he's dating her. That's what she says she needs. She's over it. We should be willing to pay it because those are her costs. <laughs> Where do your loyalties lie? With my employer. I don't feel that at all. I don't think you need to do anything further for Bodhi Leaf. Pisses me off. This whole thing pisses me off. It's up. I am watching Steve's backbone be built one block at a time. He started soft, but as Jeff got more aggressive, Steve became very clear, this is the way things are gonna be. I started to see some real leadership in him. You should pack your and you should go. All right. You should do it today. All right, I will. It's been a few weeks and we've made a ton of progress. Our new Chicago roasting and shipping facility is done and it's ready for action. Now that all our systems are in place, I'm gonna allow them to start buying beans to grow business again. So Steve has hired a new salesperson. Rick, Marcus. Marcus, nice Rick, to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet really you. Really nice to meet you. Rick's ran some big companies. We're gonna move into other parts of the country and we can do exactly what we did here with yeah. green coffee. And I picture that all the way across the United States. Most importantly, I'm seeing the progress in Steve. Here's a guy that put everything on the line to build a business for his family and his coworkers. 
At the end of the day, his unselfish behavior became his greatest asset, and his willingness to change is why Steve Sims will be known as the Coffee King if I have something to do with it. On three, one, two, three, partners! There we go.